Hello, I'm Andy Brown. I'm the editor of International Construction Magazine. Um, there's obviously been a lot of talk in the industry about the increasing strain on supply chains in construction and how big a challenge this is. Um, so I'm delighted to say that I'm joined today by an expert on supply chains. Um, so um, Andrea Petruccio is the Assistant Professor of Supply Chain Management at Florida International University. Um, thank you very much for joining us in your time. Thank you for having me here. Um, so yeah, it's brilliant. As I said, there is there is so much talk about um, kind of supply chains, and we kind of we read about it all the time. I wonder if you could just kind of sum up maybe what are some of the current challenges for the supply chain in the construction industry. Yeah, sure. Um, so I mean, over the past year and a half, almost two years, like we all know that uh, like COVID nineteen has uh, disrupted supply chain uh, uh, across the globe and in in many industries. Uh, and in particular, in the construction sector, uh, I can mention uh, two main big issues that uh, have changed and will be changing the history, the industry moving on. Uh, so on one side, uh, we have the fact that uh, uh, building material are in permanent short supply. And uh, on the other side, uh, uh, due to the fact that they are in permanent short supply, uh, there have been a significant price uh, uh, spikes. Uh, these are the bad consequences uh, on one side of driving up project and rebuilding cost, uh, which is likely to increase the final project price, uh, but on the other also affect the supply chain ability uh, to provide uh, on-time delivery, uh, which is something that uh, uh, the customer will expect when a project is overpaid. Uh, so let me give you some number uh, for what concerns the prices, just to give you the magnitude of this problem. Uh, so, uh, at the end of 2021, uh, the Association of General Contractor here in the United States uh, has released some, uh, let's say, post-COVID uh, number. And uh, uh, we can see the lumber, for example, price has increased uh, yeah, of 200% in the last two years, uh, wood 100% here over here, steel prices 80-80%, copper 61%, aluminum 33%. So overall, they estimated that uh, an average 26% of extra costs are needed by construction supply chain uh, when it's up to like planning their input. So construction project building costs uh, uh, have been have increased. Uh, and the other the other thing is that uh, several companies construction in the construction industries have tried in the past to edge the price risk of many commodities using financial instruments such as future contracts for materials, uh, but they are no more convenient right now. So they show no long-term relief. So this company has to face uh, a non-precedented price increase, uh, which is paired to what? Not only basic materials are more expensive, but uh, like in any other industries, uh, construction is facing supply chain challenging related to the production of this material. So there is an inability to receive most of this material on time for this project due to the consequences of the COVID pandemic. Uh, what happened is that at the start of the COVID pandemic, uh, uh, most of the construction company laid off employees uh, because they needed to, to tie their, their budget, and they tried to work through inventories. Uh, now that we're trying to get in sli slightly back to normal, uh, and the demand for new construction uh, is start jumping again. Think about houses, like the house market is, is yeah. crazy now. Uh, supplies for this construction product, unfortunately, hasn't caught up yet. So the time it takes to acquire materials such as glass and steel, which are one of the biggest commodities of construction project, has stretched from weeks before the pandemic to months now after the pandemic which forced construction to delay uh, their project deadline in a dramatic way, which it means that they also have to give up on, on the final price. So the combination of all these factors makes today the management of the construction supply chain very challenging, and many construction companies, especially the smaller one, are kind of struggling to stay, uh, to stay in the market. Yeah, great, thank you. That's such a good summary, and as you say, I think challenging is, is certainly one word um, for it, isn't it? Um, I kind of wonder, is this kind of one of the most stretched then that you've seen the supply chain in kind of recent years and kind of how would you assess it maybe in the kind of the near and kind of long term? Yeah, so 
shortages and uncertainty in the availability will be a must uh, for many supply chain and construction, like first and foremost. Uh, the, the, uh, the European Commission uh, has just released a report about the impact of COVID-19 two years after, after on different mm -hmm. industries. And uh, for what concerns construction, they estimated that they will not foresee a complete recovery, uh, like back to pre-crisis 2020 level, until the end of 2023. Consider that uh, uh, at the end of 2019, uh, the construction industry uh, was one uh, of the uh, industries that have reached the highest level of efficiency. So this really, uh, let's say, was detrimental to the performance that, uh, uh, that the construction uh, supply chain uh, have achieved pre-COVID. Um, and this is important to consider because uh, in this industry, uh, we have seen during COVID and in these months, uh, supply chain reaction that were effective in the short, uh, but must, must be adjusted uh, with more strategic measure in the future. Uh, let me give an example. So uh, shortages of basic material uh, have led uh, several construction companies uh, uh, to moving supply to different sites to avoid work delays, for example, to review their inventory policies, and in many cases to hoard materials to avoid such shortages. Yeah. So this intense storing of material uh, clearly work uh, like in the short term, uh, but in the long term, uh, it raises safety concern. Uh, it might have a bad impact on the environment. Uh, uh, as it increased the risk of surplus at the end of the project. Uh, but most of all, uh, uh, carrying inventory increases the project cost. Uh, so the project will be more expensive due to this uh, uh, new way to manage inventory. So basically, this is an example of a policy that worked in the previous months and in the previous years, but this is not sustainable in the long run. So construction companies need to reassess in a more systematic way their approach to inventory management. Another example is uh, uh, to reduce the risk of shortages, uh, several construction companies uh, have started thinking about alternative material uh, that in the past were considered to be uh, expensive, but today their potential availability is greater and they will help to, to keep the project on time. So while these uh, companies have looked at that uh, in the past months in an unstructured way, Today, construction companies are looking for replacement and new source of material uh, with a more systematic approach. Uh, I've, I've talked with companies that are thinking about finding alternative source for wood paneling, uh, ceiling joists, and pipes, so something that they've traditionally acquired in a, in a standard way, and they are willing to accept higher cost and, and say, stronger complication in the design and construction of the project in exchange of uh, uh, a, a higher assurance of the availability of this supply through the duration of, of the project. So all of these are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ad hoc measures that were taught uh, during the pandemic that now will become more systematically introduced uh, in, in the construction supply chain moving forward because there is still a long way to go because before this type of supply chain will will get back to 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 normal to a normal situation sure that's great thank you so i was going to ask you about yeah what some companies are trying to do to kind of lessen the impact and you've kind of touched on that with the you know the different materials and some of those other um things that you said i kind of wonder is 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 technology is that something that can help um with kind of supply chain management and is that something that you're seeing an increased use of yeah, so uh, related to this, uh, uh, technology and measure that uh, uh, can, can uh, reduce the impact on supply chain problem right now. So uh, a big issue that construction supply chain uh, uh, have, and I know because uh, my research expertise is in buyer-supplier relationships, so uh, I, I'm aware that construction supply chain uh, is one of the uh, sector uh, that is struggling the most in uh, establishing collaboration among uh, entities, uh, particularly when design, bid, build, project uh, delivery methods are, are adopted. And this has severe implications. So the lack of, uh, of, uh, of collaboration between supplier and uh, constructor and customer uh, imply a lack of understanding of the availability of materials uh, and uh, lack of understanding when there are problems such as long lead times uh, which can delay the project, the project execution. So now, in this uncertain time, it's more important than ever to redesign this like uh, buyer-supplier relationship approach. So 
uh, company need to start think about uh, how to early involve contractor, subcontractor, major supplier during the design and engineering phase uh, to uh, collaboratively come up with alternative solution and share risk management plans. For example, when it's up to alternative material or inventory management uh, uh, policies. So this collaboration will enable uh, the implementation of such strategic measure as we just discussed. How is this uh, connected to, uh, uh, to technology? So uh, to do that successfully, technolo technology will be a key enabler. So uh, digitalization uh, is kind of like a slow burner for the construction industries. Uh, uh, luckily, in this sense, uh, COVID-19 provided a, a, a decisive boost. Um, and not just uh, in, for open source, like well-known collaboration technologies, such as computer aid manufacturing or traditional co-design software. Um, I don't know if you heard, but like there is a lot of discussion about the so-called building information modeling technology now in construction. So this is a new paradigm that uh, uh, I have had the opportunity to discuss with some of the main construction companies here in the United States. Uh, so basically, this software use uh, 3D and even 5D models uh, that are able to engage uh, all project stakeholders to work together on project design in a way that uh, architect, uh, contractor, engineers from different companies can collaborate uh, uh, using the same uh, uh, computer or database uh, to fine tune the construction project. Uh, so it's a very flexible technology and it offers uh, digital modeling uh, for all the components of the construction project. Tools, people, material, uh, they can map work areas, they can uh, help uh, prevent quality problem, identified health and safety hotspot uh, uh, that can prevent uh, and can uh, allow the early identification of problems and a collaborative identification of the solution. Um, it also enables a collaborative forecasting of material according to the project timeline, which is of a huge benefit considering the trends we just discussed. Mm -hmm. So this is an example of technology that will be strategic to allow a more collaborative way of working with stakeholder and prevent possible source of risk. There are several others, but I think that this is one of the biggest innovation that COVID uh, pushed into this industry, and I'm really uh, and I'm really interested in see how this uh, uh, will mature in, in the next month because a lot of companies are looking into it. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, that's something um, that we kind of have have sort of touched on a bit. And as you say, I think COVID did sort of act as a bit of a, a digital kind of um, accelerator, didn't it? Um, just kind of wondering, kind of slightly moving away from the technology a little bit, do you, do you kind of think that are you seeing kind of companies maybe re-evaluate the supply chain and maybe look to kind of work with companies that are closer to them geographically or even maybe look at, you know, whether they can, you know, get some components or whatever it is kind of supplied themselves. Is, is that something that you're seeing? So, yes and no, in the sense that I think that uh, uh, there will be more localization trend uh, in, in many industries, but I don't see a complete shift toward local construction supply chain uh, especially as far as big companies are, are concerned. Um, the reason is because many construction companies, uh, uh, clearly they, 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 they rely on big construction projects, uh, and they heavily rely on basic materials. Uh, for example, think about specialty products like tiles, flooring, and stuff like that. Uh, and these materials are mostly sourced from global big manufacturers. So clearly, following the pandemic, uh, these materials are more at risk to be delayed or be unavailable at these uh, global manufacturers. Uh, but these global companies are still the most reliable and price convenient ones. So if, uh, uh, if, if we add a complete shifting to our regionally based supplier, uh, well, this, this could create, first of all, an even higher demand shock with similar issue that we just discussed. Uh, uh, but also it can imply like higher prices to satisfy such a, such a huge demand. In addition, uh, uh, local and smaller supplier to, to survive uh, are more demanding in terms of payment terms. So usually they want to be paid uh, in advance compared to global manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, I don't see a complete shift. Uh, what I see happening is that uh, many big companies uh, uh, will adopt more 
what we call the so-called global local dual sourcing strategy to buy uh, such material. So basically, uh, these construction companies uh, are likely to decide to purchase uh, the biggest portion of their demand uh, for the global manufacturer, but they will also identify a local supplier that will act as a backup uh, and that could potentially jump in in case of disruption to the main source of supply. So this is not clearly cost efficient. That's why it's not a popular strategy. Uh, it was not a popular strategy pre-COVID, uh, but this could avoid potentially supply disruption uh, and so that, that that would prevent any delay in the completion of the project. So that's kind of the shift in strategy that I would see, but I don't foresee a complete shift toward a more local supply base, especially in, in, in construction. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, and then my final question, and this, you know, you, you you would have already touched on some of these things, would be that um, what would your, if there was a kind of a company watching this in kind of construction and they were having kind of supply chain issues as so many companies are, all companies are, what would your kind of advice be to them? So the advice is uh, spend time on planning and uh, forecasting uh, and uh, like on all these decision making activities that unfortunately in construction due to the fact that uh, uh, there is a tack time so when the customer asks you for the project uh, and there is a delivery time uh, any minute wasted uh, not uh, doing activities on the construction site uh, is waste so that's something that for a long time construction companies have been able to deal with so doing this sort of project planning uh, during the project uh, now is an issue now due to this like many source of uncertainty in labor shortage in material in prices in delivery in transportation uh, not spending and dedicating time into planning the project before starting the project can be very detrimental because you would have or a project stop once it is started or a project recycle that in the end would cost us more time than the time that the company would have wasted in dedicated and allocated slot in planning before starting. So th that, that is the main suggestion I would give to construction company because uh, that is one of the main uh, source of weaknesses that now uh, are no more sustainable in a, in a post COVID-19 uh, uh, environment. Okay, that's great. Um... Thank you very much for your time, um, Andrea, and for your uh, expertise. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me here. It was a pleasure to talk with you.